Hello everyone, my name is Phil Cavanaugh with NEPA Remodeling. I'm just going to take a minute and explain WFT, wet film thickness and dry film thickness regarding uh, painting. Um, if you look in the data sheets, the TDS for pretty much any paint or other type of coatings out there, um, you will always see a specification for wet film thickness. Um, that means how much paint, how thick the paint is applied to the surface when you are spraying it on. Um, to measure that, you can simply use this basic little device that is called a WFT gauge, right? Um, basically it looks like a credit card and you have little notches that go around it. So each notch represents a mill, um, which a mill is a thousandth of an inch. So a paint that I work with on cabinets all the time specs four to six mil um, for wet application. So w when you're spraying it, you want to adjust and calibrate your equipment, um, your, your, your pace, your, your air pressure, your, your needle size, all that stuff. Um, dial that in um, to make sure that you are applying the coating in the correct range uh, as listed from the manufacturer. So the gauge is really easy to use. Um, essentially, when you spray it on, and before you start your project, you always want to test uh, with the paint that you're going to be using, what you're applying. Um, grab a scrap piece of plywood or you know some stock that you have in your shop um, and just dial in your gun, um, get a feel for the material, and test the film thickness to make sure that you're in range. So um, if you're an experienced sprayer, within a minute you'll have it dialed in and you're going to get more consistent results with your, your project and your finish. Um, and you know that you're going to meet what the manufacturer intended it to be um, applied to. So um, very simply, so when you spray the coating or the paint, I have a, a sample door here. Um, when you spray it on while it is wet, so immediately afterwards, you just take this gauge within the range that you're going to be in. And on this PP ga PPG gauge, it ranges from 1 to 6 on this side here. And if I turn it to this side, it goes 7 to 12. And this gauge actually goes all the way up to 80 mil, um, which is not realistic for most paints, um, you know, that you're ever going to be working with with uh, interior projects or cabinet finishing. So um, you immediately, after you put it on, you press the gauge onto the wet paint and you lift it up. So that's going to leave impressions in the paint, all right? So you never want to do it with a final work piece because you're going to create a blemish that you're going to have to sand uh, and you're going to have to fix that. So that's why you always want to test with the scrap first, dial in your process and go from there. Um, but as the teeth, they, they are graduated in height. So the, each one comes up a mill further than the one beside it. So, um, you know, if you set it in your wet paint and the tooth number four is the last one that is submerged or has paint on the actual edge of the, the gauge, um, your wet film thickness is going to be somewhere right around three to four mil. So it gives you a, a pretty clear understanding of where you are. Um, dry film thickness is very simply after your paint dries, what is going to be remaining on the surface. Um, you may also be familiar with a term regarding paints that's called a volume of solids or that's measured in a percentage. Um, so you, you'll see paints that are 38%, you know, 40%, 46% solids. What that refers to essentially is how much of that product is going to be remaining on the surface after you apply it. So using simple math, if you apply a five mil layer and you have 50% solids, that means 50% of that is either water or solvent, some sort of carrier um, catalyst that is going to evaporate and disappear, okay? So that is off gas and you're gonna have 50% of that remaining on the surface. So a five mil wet at 50% solids is gonna dry down to two and a half mils. So if it's a 10 mil thickness that you're putting on and you have a 30% solids, that means your 10 mil wet is going to shrink back to 3 mils dry. Um, that's basically what that means. So check your data sheets. They always give you the range for um, maximum coats that you can put on. They, they, some manufacturers will tell you the total maximum build. Um, you know, one of the 2K polys I work with, they specify 4 to 6 mil wet. Uh, with a maximum build of 8 to 10 mils. So I can put one coat on at 4 to 6 mils and it dries back and I'm done. 
but if I feel the need to do a second or a third coat, I absolutely can do that. I just need to stay within that eight to 10 mils dry. Um, and the product I work with is, you know, somewhere around, I think 46% solid, just a pretty heavy poly. Um, but I'm just gonna do a quick spray here to visualize how it works, and hopefully you can see it on camera. Um, I already have a couple of sprays on the back of this door. Do not yell at me for not having a uh, respirator. It's actually sitting right there, but I can't easily talk with it on, so. Okay, so I did two test sprays. So I have one over here in the corner, and when I push this in, and lift it straight up out. So I am right around four to five mils on here. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Um, this one I put on very heavy. Um, I really mayonnaised it on there. Not an acceptable level by any means for the primer. Um, I know I'm gonna be over the six. So let me go here, all of them sunk in, and there's so much it's just filling back in. So I'll flip it over and I can go to the next series, which is gonna be seven through 12 mil. And I am sitting somewhere around 10 mils of thickness there. I'm not sure if you can see the teeth, but um, that's all there is to it. Very simple to use. You should be able to pick these up at your local paint store or there's a variety of online sources for them. They're, you know, maybe a dollar or two a piece. So definitely worth having several of them in your shop. Um, also importantly, make sure you clean it off immediately after each use. You don't want to get any buildup on the edges so that way it's not going to taint your results and give you an accurate reading. So um, thank you for watching and happy spraying.